the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Your Box Seat. Yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Michael Guerin is with me again on the eve of a very good night at uh, Cambridge Raceway on Thursday night, which leads into an even more important one eight days later. Michael? Yeah, hi Greg. Um, big hi to everybody watching around Australasia and to all of our Australian viewers. We know it's going to be pretty exciting for you guys to have such a massive team coming to Cambridge, a couple this week a lot more next week, and we're gonna dissect all of their chances, who's in, who's out. I'm still not sure, Greg, we've seen the final chapters of this build-up being written yet. We might see a bit more of those at Cambridge on Thursday night, and we've also got some of those Aussie stars having their final big workouts before they jump on the plane on Sunday. It's tremendously exciting, and of course, there's more news coming out of Cambridge. Not only has their sweepstake passed its limit, so therefore it is in play, but the trot's gone to $600,000. Just a casual press release this week. 575 to $600,000, Greg. To think we now have the richest ever trotting race in Australasia, and the fact it's reached 600 grand is like, oh, cool. Another good thing happening next week. Yeah, absolutely it is, Michael. So what can you look forward to on your box seat uh, this week? Here it is. Group 1 racing action from Addington from Saturday. Muscle Mountain, a three-peat in the Fred Shaw. Tab Trot update. Uh, we'll give you the latest that we have. The Night of Champions, more than just about two races. Uh, the Flying Mile preview for Thursday night out of uh, Cambridge Raceway. It's a premier night at Addington on a Friday night, including the superstars. Our top five training performances overseas, we teased it last week. And uh, Mike Berger had his uh, final win as a trainer last week too. Right, let's get to Addington Raceway from uh, last Saturday. Muscle Mountain making it a three-peat, the first horse to be able to do it. Uh, had to sit parked outside the Williamson Pier, including the Row Cup winner from uh, last year and loving the port. He dashed away here. Here's Matthew Cross bringing them home and then we'll hear from Team Hope and also Michael Purden. Mystic Max and then came Midnight Dash but his fifth group one and this one will hit home a little more than them all. It's Muscle Mountain out by two and a half lengths. Second across was Mystic Max. Midnight Dash runs third. Been an outstanding performance by your horse again, but it wasn't so simple out there, was it? No, no to be fair, I probably got it, maybe got it wrong a little bit. I just, I didn't want to uh, burn too much out of the gate, and I thought it would be a pop around and get the front, but obviously it didn't work out that way. But uh, he's that good of a horse that uh, he can make your bad mistake look okay, and um, yeah, he's just, he's just a freak to be honest, Greg. He, he bloody jogged it, jogged. He got to the park position, and the great thing about him is he relaxed there. Yeah, definitely. And to be honest, I, he can sit part, you know, like, uh, you know, not many horses uh, can do that, but at his level, I think it, it doesn't matter where he is, really. I think uh, park's actually a not bad position for him, to be fair. Special win for the family this week. You, you lost your nan, and, and she was a huge supporter of yours. Absolutely, Greg. Uh, you know, she, uh, yeah, she was awesome, really. She uh, honestly, she missed. She was a huge follower of mine. Arguably, probably my biggest supporter. And um, yeah, she never missed a race meeting. Watching it on TV, and uh, she'd always message me after every race meeting. And um, yeah, well, I'd be forever thankful for her for all her support. And uh, yeah, this was definitely for her. You go to the tab trot now. You got a few Aussie Raiders coming your way. Today's performance should send a few shivers down their spines. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect the hell out of them, Greg, but they'll have to be good. That was a statement performance today. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, well I've always thought he's the best, but until they do it, you don't really know, do you? Yeah. Well, sitting parked in a group one's never a great spot to be, but with this horse, you must add confidence. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. He, he's just... Yeah, he's an amazing gated horse, just got the all-round package. Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, just spoke to Ben about taking on the Aussies. You must be looking forward to that challenge now. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we want to know where our packing order is, and, and we think we're up to them. Yep, well, on that performance and his previous performance, yeah. we know that. Midnight Dash was good too, and he's heading the same way. Yeah, no, he was super. He got held up around the last bend and just got clear late and got home good. So, yeah, he won't disgrace himself. Congratulations to you, Nina. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Michael is right back to where he needs to be. Certainly is. Uh, it's probably fair to say the way he ran home there, that was probably nearly the run of his career. There's a tab drop coming up, and there's a relation of yours has got a slot. He hasn't filled it yet. No, well, that's right. Well, hopefully, you know, Uncle Tony was watching and uh, see how we go. But, you know, um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Yeah, it's taken him a few runs to get him where you need him to be. But today was a clear example that uh, he's right up to this level. Yeah, he certainly is. You know, last year was a good transition period for him. And uh, not just for him, but for myself, you know, really taught me what level these free for -alls need to be at. A couple of things to unpack there, Michael. First of all, obviously, the conversation with Uncle Tony has uh, gone well because Mystic Max is now in the tab trot, but Muscle Mountain's back to his absolute best on that performance. Deal with the winner first, Greg. Yeah, excellent. Good to see him back. A and winning sitting parked, that could have been a very blasé affair if he just held the lead or run to the front and, and won easily because, you know, it wouldn't have told us much. I think it's showing us that he's really in the zone and, and he wants to be there at the moment, which after a horse has had a, a mixed up back end to the season last year, it's good to see he's a happy horse. I think like a lot of the races I've seen around Australasia in the last three or four months for the Trotters, and there's obviously some which have been high quality, but a lot of the races don't really mean anything in the context of a pecking order because Just Believe tended to win most of the races he was in. Um, Call Me The Breeze versus him and the Great Southern Star was a proper horse race. Then Call Me The Breeze went to Menango and won the Hammerhead and that was just a pointless exercise because the other favourite galloped. We're going to see another race shortly from, from Melton, which did matter. And I'm talking about mattering in the scheme of developing any idea on who the best horse is. And a lot of Oscars wins, Greg, haven't meant much to me. I've loved watching them but they haven't told me anything because he was clearly better than those horses, and that's another one. Like, if you ran that race and Muscle Mountain was fit and happy, he'd win it 99 times out of 100. Yep. In many ways, it's quite good because it brings these very disparate form lines to Cambridge, not this week, but for the TRB trot. And it kind of gives you the feeling almost all the horses are in form. But I don't really know what all of them mean. <laughs> Well, I don't know whether that's as good as Muscle Mountain can go or if Oscar had been on his back, he would have got close to them. And I think that doubt's quite good for the TAV trot. So, yeah, I think we've got a lot of horses heading in the right direction. The obvious one, we don't know exactly where he gets at, is Oscar, and we'll learn more about him on Thursday night. But it's been a really strange last year. I've seen a lot of trotters do really good things and outside the exception of maybe the Canterbury Park Trotting Cup when Oscar blew straight past Muscle Mountain, maybe the Great Southern Star when Call Me Breeze went straight past Just Believe, a lot of it hasn't told me much more than what I already knew. When Just Believe sat parked and won an Inter Dominion, Greg, I was like, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. And yep. that's not being negative about how hard those things are to do. But this is why you need a race like the TRB trot. You need to get these horses together so we actually have some idea really how good they are. And that's going to be the really fun part of the next 10 days. Yeah, absolutely it is, uh, Michael. Midnight Dash uh, was very good. And, and of course, he goes uh, north. And I understand Tony Hurler, he is likely to drive him uh, as he's fallen into their slot, of course. Um, you mentioned the race at Melton last Saturday night. Here it is. RC Phoenix and Just Believe. RC Phoenix getting the lead, Just Believe. Having an opportunity to run past him, but over the short course, Michael, he wasn't able to do it. 153.5, excellent time, and this is the best version of RC Phoenix. Well, it's also a scary version for any horse who draws outside him at Cambridge, because I, I don't know whether he'll turn up like this at Cambridge. Obviously, he galloped the start before. But if he does, and he gets big and strong, because Cambridge is one of those tracks where they get against the markers and they feel really happy with themselves and they puff up, if he does that, maybe there's no handing up. Maybe when we've seen Just Believe, who I think's the best of these horses, sitting parked and being beaten now, I think two out of his last three or two out of his last four, Greg, people start going, well, I might just leave him there. And again, that's good for the race. I have no idea whether that's going to happen. We don't know the barrier draws. They don't get revealed till Monday night, Greg. 
But you mentioned on the show two weeks ago the dollar seventy five was too short for him. Well, you were very right. He's now two point five. He'll probably start favourite in this race. There's only eight horses in it, but this is interesting. They're going to draw an emergency group. So one of these horses could, well, one of them will draw the second line, and it, it's going to enormously damage the chances of whoever that is, whether it's Just Believe, Call Me the Breeze, or Muscle Mountain. Mathematically, it absolutely is, is likely to happen with obviously Queen Elida uh, getting barrier one. Spoke to Michael Purden today, so both Mystic Max and High Energy, who starts this week in the Flying Mile at Cambridge, are on a flight Wednesday morning, so they'll both be uh, up there. Elder Baron Zeus won this race uh, last year. I know this might be a little bit unusual, but I need to show you Oscar, the last time he was at Cambridge, and what he was able to do. Uh, he went a very quick time on this occasion and he was dominant. It's a wee while ago, Michael, but uh, he was very, very good, Oscar, and he's very fast, as we know. Is he back to his best? Well, I know you were catching up with uh, Mark Purden, so is he? Well, I rang Mark um, this afternoon, and, and I asked him that question, and what he said was, because he was in a bad reception area, so I couldn't quite work out what he was saying, Greg, so it sort of sounded like that. But when I did get about five seconds of his time, the one thing he did say was that he thinks he's at 85% this week. That was literally the only part of the conversation which made any sense, and I actually had to hang up and say, mate, ring me later on when you're in a bit area. So That I've was very no, good, Michael. Well, I've got no idea what he was saying. I thought you were from, in a bad area. <laughs> well, apart from saying he's 85%, I actually don't know what he was talking about. And one thing he, I gleaned from that five seconds of chat was, he's not at his peak this week, but he's not gonna to need to be. The three horses drawn inside him, we've got no chance. Um, Queen of Light is drawn outside him. I see Cherie Thompson's driving Queen of Light. Uh, it was because the last like time last she driving. raced in New Zealand. Yeah, I, I, thought that I, I can confirm first. that uh, Chris Alford is coming across for Thursday night as well, and Natalie Rasmussen is aboard Oscar. Yeah, so I thought that was confirmed. weird. Uh, I yeah. thought that must be a last time. No, I, I had to check that out, Michael, because as soon as I well, saw that, yeah. Well, I reckon this is really interesting because I reckon Oh, well, no, not reckon. Oscar will blast across them. He'll lead because he's simply too fast not to lead those horses yep. inside him. Then this whole race comes up to one thing. Does do they Queen go forward and Queen forward. Forward. Go yep. forward? And do they hand? I reckon they probably will. I, reckon. I don't know. I haven't asked him. Because he's a better follower. There's no question about that. I think yeah. if... Yeah. And then who, he he okay. can win who, if he's in front. But Who would you be on? Uh, oh, I, th I still uh, think Oscar. I, I still think Oscar. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to dig a bit more into that when Mark. He's a dollar fifty, by the way. Dollar yeah. fifty, two seventy for Queen Elida. Yeah, I'll, I'll dig into it more over yeah. the next couple of days. There'll be a preview on HRNZ. There'll be a preview on the Herald website. We'll make sure we give everybody the most information we can because it's a cl it's a clean two horse race. They don't come any more two horse than this, and that being the case, <laughs> you can probably add whoever we think's going to win after asking everybody um, to whatever other betting you do this weekend. But that is a two-horse Greg. The other feature of the night, it would be one of the strongest and most even open class pacing races we've had, not only in New Zealand, but particularly at this level, I reckon since COVID. Yeah, it's an outstanding field, and we'll get to that in a moment. You do have an opportunity. The sweepstake has been closed, of course, uh, on Sunday night, that was. But Harness Link have come to the party, and they are giving away some uh, tickets to this. So the Harness Link, uh, Link sweepstake giveaway on the tab trot. There are several ways that uh, you can get involved here. Go to Harness Link. That'll give you the, the information. Uh, if uh, you want to get one of their 60 Yes, 60 sweepstake tickets that they're giving away. Uh, you can uh, do it by becoming a subscriber to the Harness Link Insider, getting on Facebook and uh, clicking on uh, that and posting something, and uh, also via Twitter. So, yeah, there's some great opportunities there for you, Michael. By the way, the sweepstake will be drawn against those trotters in the tab trot on Thursday night as part of the coverage out of Cambridge. So, Michael, good on Harness Link getting in behind this as well. I know they purchased about the last 150 tickets uh, to make sure it got over that 1,000 ticket threshold. And um, John Curtin's been a great supporter of this show, and now he's got him behind this Cambridge trot uh, as well, the tab trot. So, good on him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Harness Link's been, been really active in those spaces, supporting causes that are good for the industry in the last couple of years. Um, so well done to them. 
Um, I purchased five tickets, Greg. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but if if I draw a horse or I win any money, uh, I don't think it's apt that someone in my job would keep that money. So if, and I probably won't, but if I draw a horse, that'll be running for a charity. So I'll, I'll think of a charity or someone out there could get hold of me if they want. If I, if I draw a horse, because yeah, it wouldn't be the right thing to do to have it running around in the circles for me to get some money, Greg, but first we have to draw one. Yes. Um, just on that, by the way, you mentioned the draw. Um, yep. The live, barrier hold, it'll be, the, yeah, it'll be live on Monday yeah. night, but it'll be a reveal rather than a draw. Yeah, that's a, just, just, yeah, just, I want to get this right for 7 30 Monday night. I don't want people to think this is free to wear as well now, Michael. Yes, mm. good. Um, mm. I don't want to think this is going on behind their backs. So, yep. Harness Racing New Zealand will draw the field, much like NZTR did with the fields for the Karaka Millions. Yep. And they'll be revealed at a function you are hosting on Monday. Monday night. So yep. the TAB bookies will close those markets, I'm certain, between the reveal. So no one can have a bet into them, no one can get conned or yep. inside information. And it happens all, all over the world now with major races. Um, just on trackside, they've had a, a huge, we're recording this on Tuesday, huge yep. day, which is going to roll into a huge uh, next year. Now, the, the guts of this is obviously new graphics, they look better because they're smaller, so therefore they have more room for horses and dogs. That's good. Yep. Um, one of the key things is more based around wind dividends, but also tote versus book, because clearly the book has become the main way that most people... And the bet. removal of place. Yep, removal of place, yep. which you can still bet on them. And of mm. course, all the information's available on tab.co.nz. The removal of the word TAB from trackside, yep. which makes sense because if you want to uh, put that in other marketplaces, the connotation of betting around it is is not something which everybody in the world wants to be part of, so that's very smart. Most importantly for Harness, because the rest of that stuff matters, but it doesn't matter as much as this, is I'm hearing um, that there's going to be more presenters on track next year. Now, Harness got really gutted by about four years ago. When there, ne there needed to be restrictions, we understood that. But there was like four meetings a year with presenters. And I'm not really sure Greg Harness and Racing has really recovered from that. I think it fell at a really bad time with Operation Inca. I just think it was, Harness got hurt a lot more than the two other codes. I know that, and the market share shows that. I think um, Entain's uh, ambition to have Harness Racing presenters back on track and make the Friday night product, which is a really big product, a lot more digestible to people, is crucial. I applaud it, uh, and I can't speak about it highly enough. It's a person who's studied this all over the world. You need people at race meetings telling stories and engaging people to drive turnover. Anybody who doesn't believe that, well, the tab under Entain doubled down on the Everest, Karaka Millions and New Zealand Cup Week this year and had massive results. So the proof is there. Engagement with your audience drives more turnover, which is more money for the industry. So the fact that they're going to make our Friday nights, and it'll percolate through uh, the race by Grins next week, I believe there's a big team on track for that, and through New Zealand Cups. That's crucial, and it couldn't come at a better time, Greg, because I believe harness racing in the last four or five years, and this is not the presenters or the producers' fault. These are decisions made way at the top, way before Entain got involved. But this pathway forward is going to help harness racing not only fight for market share, to try and engage people who have rugby and league and a whole bunch of other things they can watch on Friday night. Yep, absolutely, that's right. Uh, two fifty for Just Believe boosted the normal uh, price at the moment. It's three twenty Muscle Mountain. You can get three dollars sixty tab.co.nz for that. Catch a Wave was back winning at Melton. Not coming to the race by Grins, but the second horse is. I still thought he was very good. Uh, he's on a pathway better eclipse to a race he's been in before. And look, the lead is obviously a very good horse. He won a Miracle Mile leading in doing this. They sprint up the straight, better Eclipse takes half a length off him. That's pretty good. Um, he's heading to the Nullarbor. It'll be interesting to see how he goes around Gloucester Park. Maybe it will make him feel big and strong. Big horse like him on a little tiny track. Better Eclipse is in the right type of form. He adds great depth and good people to that race night, Greg, alongside Just Believe. So. I think the Sugars team are a really good fit. And when you go through all the trainers and drivers coming, because Anthony Butt's coming, 
to drive um, rock and roll do. Mick Stanley's very popular. Um, the, the team, the, the Price team out of Queensland, they're really popular with their good horse, Speak the Truth, who had a big workout on Tuesday and paced 153 around Albion Park. When you see all these type of people coming, and a Nathan Jack and an Anton Galeno, that adds to the carnival, Greg. These are people that people like, they want to follow them, and they're coming to take on Rasmussen and Purden and Purden Phelan and Zach Butcher. Yeah. That's tasty stuff, Greg. That, that, the people around these horses matter almost as much as the horses. Yeah, I totally agree with that, uh, Michael. You mentioned the race, the flying mile that is at Cambridge, uh, the depth to this race. Here's Don't Stop Dreaming, winning at Alexandra Park, Sitting Park. We've seen this before, Michael, but this is the 59th running of this excellent race at Cambridge. He was outstanding here, self-assured, back to something like his best. Of course, he won this race last year from Barrier 8. It was as good a race as we saw in 2023. I thought this race last year, and the depth in this field, Michael, would suggest we could be in for another blinder. Be interesting to see whether similar tactics get employed this year, because last year there was a couple of horses who weren't going to the race, all were natural leaders, and they needed to get out there and rock and roll because it was more or less their chance to win where they probably couldn't win the race, or they weren't eligible for the race. This year, most of these horses are in the race with the obvious ultra wise guy not being in and it's a great chance for him to roll the dice, same as Republican Party. Like these horses can go forward and, and have a dig because they're not racing next week. Well, they're not racing for a million anyway. I uh, spoke to Scott Phelan and uh, he said to me, they're not gonna give instructions to their drivers. Tony Hurley, he gets on sooner the better rather than Scott, because Scott's gonna drive Mark Shard. I said, well, what do you think Tony will do? He said, well, we'll give him the option to stay in front. If he wants to stay in front, he's Tony Hurley, he can do what he wants. But I said, where does that pin Mark Shard and Merlin? Because what I was checking, Greg, was making sure there's not a plan that sooner the better leads, we'd love to hand up to Merlin. Now, they're not saying it won't happen, but they said, look, really, we think there's a fair bit of speed underneath us. It's a million next week. We can see ourselves being conservative early. Now, that's an indication. By no means is that confirmed, or is that exactly what's going to happen. But when you deal with these people all the time, you have a pretty good understanding of what they're saying. And I think sooner the better, maybe Alter Wise Guy, even Republican Party, Greg, could get involved early. And all those horses drawn out wider, I'm not saying they'll pull back, but I don't think they'll fly off the gate and start rocking and rolling. So there's a warning for your punters. I'm not saying that's certain, but all the indications I've got is that's what will happen. Maybe Don't Stop Dreaming just comes and sits parked and win. Maybe he's that good. Maybe he does. Yep. But I don't want to be backing these horses drawn wide, even though I think they're the best horses in the race, because I'm not sure where they're going to be after 400 metres. And my life, Greg, of watching Cambridge Harness Racing for mile racing has seen plenty of races where I believed in miracles, and after 400 metres, I thought to myself, the miracle's gone. Waste of time. <laughs> yeah, well, I went through a bit of the gate speed. Republican Party's led several good races, Derby being one, Junior Free for All, uh, but he's never just blasted and gone to the lead. He's worked his way to the front. Uh, I think he might try that tactic, Blair Orange, but yeah, it's it's all going to come out. Both him and Ulta Wise have nothing to lose, Greg. No, they haven't. Absolutely. Look, there's no haven't. million dollar check for them next week unless something unless goes something bizarrely happens. wrong. Yep. So yeah, six dollars sooner the better. Seven fifty Old Town Road. No, six dollars is gone. Four dollars fifty sooner the better. Ah, so there's an indication the of what some people are thinking. That opened at six. It was four fifty after twenty minutes. All right, Merlin and uh, Don't Stop Dreaming so were about the same. Three point five. Yep. There's a good chance they may drift. Yep. Um, they can't both tighten. No. Uh, rock and roll do's the really interesting one. Yep. Um, a butt's coming across to drive him. Mick Stanley said he won't be here the next week. He's actually been here for a week and a half. Rock and roll do's. Yes. Staying with hanging the out with the Dalgettis. Yep. Yeah. So interesting because he's following out a horse who gets off the gate really well, and he might just find himself three back on the outside without doing much. Now mm. he's a big ungainly yak of a thing, but he can run, and he oh, gets yeah. a park to win a Victoria Cup. So mm. he's an interesting one. And the other interesting one is. If sooner the better tries to stay in front, I'm not sure he will, but it's bizarre to even think that, considering he's a rating 65 racing open class horses. Um, but that would put Kango on the trail, yep. uh, which will give him a top four Well, chance. he wouldn't have been in the trail for a heck of a long time in his career, I wouldn't have thought.
Can't think of the no, it's a really intriguing race, but just just be careful, punters. I'm not saying don't have a bet. Just be smart mm. because the yeah, don't stop dreaming might come and beat them. But I just don't want to be thinking he's going to be driven like the dominant horse because this is six percent of the stake for what they're racing for next week. Six percent. Six percent. Yep. Spoke to Matty White about uh, his new addition, South Coast Arden. Todd Mitchell takes the reins this week. Matthew uh, is suspended, but he'll be back on for the race next week. So that is the Fly Mile this week. What a race. Craig Thompson will be uh, on track. Uh, market for the race by Grins. Don't Stop Dreaming, 225 Merlin, 450 Speak the Truth, $5. Better Eclipse, Sooner the Better, at about $11. 812 the Flying Mile with Macmillan Feeds on uh, Thursday night. Looking forward to that. And also next week, we've got the Dorothy Cutts Invitational Lady Drivers Race. Uh, Kieran Manning's coming, Michael. I think this is just another tick in the box for Cambridge. Amanda Turnbull, uh, Natalie Rasmussen will drive for the Australians. They've got Emily Johnson, they've got a junior in each uh, of the teams and the likes of Sam Motley, Cherie Tomlinson, uh, Nikki Chilcott. They're all participating as well. So um, yeah, I, I think that's just another addition to the night that will only enhance it. Of course it will. There's going to be young ladies, whether they're six or 16 or 26, yep. watching over the fence at Cambridge and they want to think there's a pathway if they want to get involved in racing or at least that the women who do get involved in racing are treated with some respect, Greg. Yep. And I think it's bloody cool. Mm. I think it's a great idea and I think it should happen more often in this country. Why not have one on show day? Why, Why not? not have one? And make them penalty free, which seems to attract the trainers. Um, just on Don't Stop Dreaming in 225, just be really careful there, punters, because a couple of factors here. Uh, he's not going to have a stable mate in the race who can help him. There's only him and self-assured, and they're totally different teams. So there's going to be no love for him in what's going to be an 11-horse draw. Don't forget they're going to draw another horse. So he's three spots could be drawn on the second line. He'll be five bucks if he starts on the second line. Could be four dollars. But even if he draws barrier two, Greg, he's not certain to lead. You taking 225 in this field, I want to be on the leader at 225. And no matter where he draws, he's not the certain leader. And he doesn't have anybody, not saying this will happen, but he doesn't have a sooner the better he's going to hand up to him straight away. Just be really careful there, punters. That market's not right. Now, if he draws barrier three, he might go around 225. But I don't see any a real way he can go around any shorter than that, and it's still 10 days away. Yeah, good advice there, uh, Michael. As we go to our first break, uh, the Kindergarten Stakes was run last week at Wyndham. Here's Rubera getting the job done for Blair Orange as sixth win in the race. Uh, goes back to Lenham when it dead heated with Bought in the Pub back in 2003. It was pretty wet down there, but he's a pretty smart animal. Mark and Nathan Perth and Ribeira take out the kindergarten stakes and wins well. Did all the work and he was too tough. Second, Ukraine. Well, it's been a good race for you and that continues. Yeah, it's been a very kind race to me, Greg. Uh, lucky I've been able to get on the right horses and, uh, you know, they've performed well. Pretty wet down there. Got around them at the right time, but still had to be very good. Yeah, he did, Greg. It was, uh, the conditions were testing, uh, both horse and drivers, so... Yeah, you know, we got round on a slow speed and we only sort of clicked it up really from the 450. So, you know, it, it was an easy time to get round and, you know, we dashed that really, really fast last 400 and he, he proved he was the best. So he had a couple of runs, still looks like he's got a bit to learn. That's got to be good going forward. Yeah, got a lot to learn still, Greg. He's uh, still very immature and unsure of things. So, yeah, every race day he'll learn and, you know, I think he'll be way better over a longer trip. winning the Hunter family pace. Good effort this, Michael. We spoke about it last week. To come off the back mark was never going to be easy. Charlie Brown ducked through on the inside. There wasn't a lot in it in the finish, but it was win number 10 for this pretty smart pacer. Yeah, he's a good horse. Uh, he's a horse who so I'm not sure will be totally suited to a New Zealand Cup, but I think he'll be good enough to get into one. And good to see Craig with a sort of a signature pacer type horse. So yeah, I, I really like him and 
Yep. Um, you know, my views on Nathan Williamson, I think he's one of the absolute stars of New Zealand harness racing. And yeah, those boys, those young fellas from down the deep south, Greg, they're flying the flag pretty darn well. Yep, they are. Congratulations to Brick and Farms as well. First race is a Premacy Heat. They trained the trifecta there, miraculous, took it out. And uh, second was Harrison John and Dawson. No mean feat uh, to have bred the trifecta there. Let's get into Addington and we'll go back and have a look uh, at the Fahey fence hire on uh, Saturday. And this was a deserved victory from uh, Ulta Meteor. Had been bribes made behind a Hoka Connor in their previous two clashes in February. He got in front of a Hoka Connor here and uh, dashes up the Addington straight. Beach ball looked home, but here come the Telfer pair and Ulta Meteor gets there. We'll hear from co-trainer Amanda Telfer post-race. Ultimeteor flies over the top and Ultimeteor, Ultimeteor, Franco Marek second, beach ball every chance. Well, both the big boys have gone well, but I reckon he deserved that. Look, he did deserve that. Um, Coxie, uh, I actually walked out the stables uh, on Thursday and they'd just come off the track and I said, what do you reckon? He said, if I can't beat him this week, I'll never beat him. So it was, it was quite spot on. They both go next week to the superstars and you'll have an addition to that too. Yeah, um, we'll step the mare, All-American Lover, out, um, just see uh, see how she works this week, but more than likely she'll come as well. You've been happy with her prep. I know she's trialled and she did exactly what you wanted her to do. Yeah, she did. Um, we just put Nikita on at the trials and we told her to drive her, just drive her quiet and let her run home, and she did exactly that. So we we're quite happy with her. Right, which one will Tim drive? A Hoka Connor. He won't get off. Yes, actually he was outstanding, but I thought it was uh, a good race for Older Meteor to win. Michael and prove that he's up to this level. Goes to the Coca-Cola Superstars this week, along with All-American Lover. Franco Merrick was excellent in that race, Michael. Three back the fence, got clear late, charged through there. He's in it as well uh, as Beach Ball, who surely will just keep on improving. His first run, he got back, had no chance. He was in front there on Saturday. I'm not going to say he blew out, but he's a big stallion. He'll be improved for this week, and the Superstars has always been a good race. Look, I, I like the fact that these horses were comparing oranges with oranges. It's yep. not like we've got a cooter going around in these races and just beating them because he's too good for most of them. I think these horses are largely comparable. I think Beach Ball might be the best of them, but the Telfer horses are really improving. And these horses are important, Greg, because take away the three or four don't Stop Dreamings and Merlins going around at Cambridge. We have a pretty big hole in open class. Now there's no Akuta and no copy that. And I'm not sure Self Assured will be here by the back end of the season. So these are the horses who are going to be in our New Zealand Cup up against Leap to Fame. And it's really important they keep getting better. And you can just see them getting better. Ulta Meteor, you can just see him learning how to run through that pain barrier. Ahoka Connor learning what he needs to do with that big frame. Yeah, I think it's a really good time for these horses to embellish themselves over the next couple of months without having to bang heads against the absolute superstars. Yep, yeah, be a good addition. Uh, the 41st running of the Coca-Cola Superstars. Here's some other runners that you might want to invest in on uh, Friday night on the premiere night. Uh, let's go back again to Saturday, and here's Aroha Kenny. She deserved this victory. Mighty Logan put in a big run. Uh, hell of a moment, made up good ground as well. But Aroha Kenny, I, I know it's look like she's been a bridesmaid and maybe she wasn't finding the line. She absolutely found it. Two Tangata did too, though, uh, Michael, and they'll be there Friday night. Well, when they're three, you've got to put them to the well. They've got to race at Oaks and Derbies and all sorts of races because they're there and they don't get many chances to do that sort of stuff. But clearly, she's got better for that experience. She's trotting very cleanly now. It looks good. She'll end up in open class um, as, well, I think, the third horse. So I think they went up at open class, Greg, and again, they'll add to that because she's a naturally talented horse. Phil just had to race her last season um, because those races are worth so much and you don't get many cracks at them, but I reckon in a year's time, Greg, she'll be at open class. She's only won the four races. She's going to win a heck of a lot more, and she's raced uh, by Bev as well. So uh, congratulations uh, to her. Uh, let's have another look at a horse uh, we've focused in on on the box seat in the past. Warrior Chief is his name. Gee, had put in a big run here, Michael. He'd got the lead, but this was a deep, deep race, the Airpark Canterbury Pace, and 
Uh, I thought he was excellent. Uh, he goes to Addington again this week. Carrera Rapido picked them up. That's Pandaya down the outside. This will be a, a, an excellent form race, I think, going forward. It will be. And how brutal is it when, you, uh, when you've when you got a horse in front and you know they get dive-bombed after you've done all the work, you've seen everybody else off. But he is a nice horse. I agree. Big, long striding boy. Looks like he wears a nice, big, long hop also. Yep, good to see them get a good horse. Um, didn't mind uh, the second horse either, stomping home late. So, bit to like about that race, Greg. Yeah, Pandaya. Good form race. Yeah, it is. Uh, out of here we go again. So, uh, Natalie and Jamie Gamerson, they've certainly got a nice one uh, there. I reckon he'll keep on progressing. So, will this horse, Zlendi, the big boy. Have a look at him out wide. Uh, he's never been further back than second in his nine starts to date, Michael, and he charges home here. Watermelon Sugar got the business done. Second win on the day for the Delgettys and uh, Carter. But Zlendi's the horse that I want to keep following. Have a look at Point Break as well in the Brendan Hill colours. Didn't get much luck late in the piece. He's an absolute follow out of the race. He's funny, isn't he? When you watch Zlendi, you think he'd be wearing um, like ghost rates because he's, you know, he's just such a big, thumping an awkward looking horse, but I think it's just a maturity. I think he's just so big, he's just going to need a bit more time. Because when you look at him, you naturally think, oh, is he, is he hitting a knee? But when you see him front on, he's not. So, yeah, Bobby Wood's obviously spent plenty of time on the horse, and he'll spend plenty more time on him. And, hmm, I think he's uh, he's got three or four more left in him, Gregory. Yeah, Mr Kaplan was the hot favourite in that. She came from the outside draw. She was disappointing. She's in the Canterbury uh, Breeders this week, so it'll be interesting to see if she can bounce back uh, from that performance. Princess Meritaton will be in the same race, Michael. Um, we've seen this before. The speed she showed from about this point, the 300 uh, to the 100 metres, uh, is speed of a very, very good horse. Yep, you love it when they can corner up like that and rail like a greyhound and take off. So yeah, she's been really good in a really short career to, to, to date. Um, I, like, I like the idea of these races, Greg. I must admit, I was sort of surprised it was a premiere this week because it doesn't have a premiere feel, but it has a depth feel with all these, whatever they're called, autumn classics or whatever the autumn bonus races, I suppose, they really are. And I think it's great that people can aim at those this week because, you know, all the good horses are supposed to be in Cambridge by now, or the absolute top horses. So it's the perfect time to drop this in. I reckon it's going to be a great betting night. Yep, there's uh, $30,000 races they are, and there were supposed to be five of them, Michael. There's ended up being six because so many of these horses, and you're right about the form lines, they come together, and that makes for a, br a great betting contest. Well... It also goes back to what we spoke about previously, which was entange new attitude to content and, and having people on track. You need to have people on track to, to unpick all this stuff because here's what's going to happen this weekend. There's massive gallops at Trentham and massive, massive imperatures versus I wish I would. That just takes all the oxygen out of the room, plus Cambridge on Thursday. So people get to Addington Friday and go, God, who's in here? Oh, OK. And they need someone on track to talk them through it. And that's why it's so important, these decisions that are being made upstairs in the building I'm sitting in right now, to say, let's do this. Because otherwise, Greg Harness Racing will get left behind. And it's really important to have that knowledge going to people. Because even the people watching this show, who may be Harness Racing zealots, Greg, by the time they watch Cambridge on Thursday night, and they've got all the scallops on Saturday, who's going to have the time to do all this form? And that's why presenters on track... And this new attitude to them is so crucial to trying to save harness racing turnover. Yep, and we'll absolutely get as much information as we possibly can to encourage you to have a bet, but also to find uh, the winners there on uh, Friday night. Time for us to take a, uh, another break on your box seat. Yes, it's brought to you by your stable of sponsors who have been such great supporters over the last uh, three and a half years or so. On the other side, we've got a couple of good races from Cheviot, including the time-honoured Leonard Memorial that we'll have a look at as well and we will be telling you what our top five overseas New Zealand trained performers Michael and I have thought uh, it has been since 1970.
In your home straight, in your box seat, uh, a guy that we all like in harness racing, uh, very few uh, enemies and uh, a lot of people uh, uh, have been supporters of his for a long time. Mike Berger brought down the curtain on his training career. He did that at uh, Manawatu last Thursday night. Not only did he win with this horse, Invisible, he got a double Michael uh, Barbarossa winning earlier in the night, but uh, he's been an outstanding horseman, Mike Berger. We'll talk about some of his exploits uh, shortly, but great to see him not only winning a race on his last night as a trainer, but getting a double. Yeah, I was stoked. I actually don't watch a lot of Manawatu harness racing because I'm too busy doing other things. But I tuned in last week hoping to see this, and I got to see it twice. Um, just a bloody good guy, Mike. He's had a really long career, and he, he was really good early in his career, as we see Ben coming back, who drove both these horses. With young horses, he was really good at you know, getting those supreme ruler-type horses to win races back when you and I were kids, Greg. And, and you, you grow to know the colours and know the people and you really enjoy them. And then when I got north and I finally met Mike, he was a real gentleman and, and quite a gentle person in saying that. Yeah, he, he's still a rough and ready type of guy, but has really good manners and he was always happy to see you. About 10 years ago, he went through a bit of a tough time. I think he got a bit down, which all of us can do in life sometimes. And he bounced back and he, he reduced the size of the team and all the pressures that come with that and staff and he reshaped himself and, and then went on to train a whole stack of, of winners after that too, Greg. So uh, he's just a good guy. And one of those guys who when I'm walking through the stabling area at Alexandra Park, you always give him a wave or if you've got the time, go over and say hello because I think a sign of a good person, Greg, is when you speak to them, do you feel better afterwards? And I always felt good talking to Mike. And I know he's a good horseman because you can't train horses for 40 years and be successful uh, with how much harness racing has changed unless you are a good horseman because you know, plenty of other people don't trade as many winners as Mike Berger because they couldn't adapt and he did it even on a very personal level so yeah, I'll be sad to see him go but I look forward to seeing him at Cambridge when I go there next week. Yeah absolutely, what about his stats, how many winners did he train and who did he train them with? Individually he trained over 550 over 700 total in recent times with Matty White uh, that stint with Warren Rich included uh, the Quinella in the 2002 New Zealand Cup winner, uh, Gracious Knight, and of course Factor Non Verba. Um, I know that uh, Warren had the majority of the of the time with Gracious Knight, but that was still a hell of an effort. Other Group 1 wins, um, V4 won a Taylor Mile, Coburg was a really good mare, won a Standard Bred Breeders, and uh, finished second to Alta Serena in a Neville R too, so um, he had too many good horses for it to be a fluke. Yeah, and as you can see from that photograph, a fashion icon. That, yes, that, absolutely. That absolutely <laughs> sums up Mike uh, in, in many ways. So, Mike, congratulations um, from all of us uh, on a great career. I and see they've got a race for him, Michael. Uh, race number four on Thursday night's the happy retirement, Mike Berger. And I, I think that's a pretty nice gesture. Of course it is. Yeah. Mm. No, as I said, looking forward to seeing him again. And um, Yeah, it, you know, it's funny when someone trains 700 winners, you know that everybody watching the show is back one of them. Yeah. So, you know, Do you remember like, that day, that, that yeah. cup day, when, the, when they ran 1-2 and they were clear of the field too? Um, yeah. well, that must have been pretty special. Gracious Knight came from last, didn't it? Came from near last. Came from, yep, midfield. Yep, yep Factor and, um, was up the front. Yep, and, and Factor non verbal was a lovely horse. So He I'm won glad, an Easter Cup as well. Factor I'm glad non Mike had that. I'm glad Mike had that moment because a lot of good trainers have never won a New Zealand Cup. No, exactly. So congratulations on a stellar career. Mentioned earlier, Addington, two-pronged attack this week because it is the Cheviot meeting there on Sunday. We can't examine the fields because they're not out yet, but we're going to have a look at a couple of the races. Uh, the Leonard Memorial is always a good race. Last Wednesday at Addington, this happened, Michael. General Jen got uh, the job done here. Um, nice effort, nice type of a, a filly and a bit of depth to this year's uh, race. So looking forward to seeing if she can go on with it for Hayden Cullum. Well, I spoke to Hayden last week about this. Um, by the way, second horse here, a bit luckless, really good. But he said with both his fillies who finished first and third, he wanted them driven neutral and just go back at the start, then move into the race. And that's a really hard way for juveniles to win because they have to want to be there. It's, they're not up against the marker pegs, which they like. They tend to like following them. So they were both really good. He did say something which was really interesting for punters heading forward, just to put in your little 
black book thing in your head. He said, the third horse is getting better every time we take it to the track, and I think there's not much between them. Now, General Jen's going to be well on the market for any race she's in. But that third horse, where you make your money out of those horses, Greg, is top threes, top fours. Because in harness racing, often you have those favourites, and then the horses out in the market are $20, $30. They sometimes go around $4, $50, $5, $3.80, top threes and top fours. So just keep its name in your head for a little bit. Um, I think it's a pretty nice horse too. Good to see Hayden wine-like. doing good things. Yeah, wine-like. That's it. Um, Hayden trained two winners last week. Uh, he and Amanda have had to reshape their business in the last couple of years. They've done it really well. They've got 20 horses at work. And I think the horse who won the race before that last week's a pretty nice horse too, whose name I absolutely can't remember. <laughs> but right. it, um, but it, it was it was pretty good. It led him and won pretty well too. So good to see Hayden's colours back out there. Yep, absolutely it is. Uh, Chevy at Cup, part of the Country Cups uh, series. Let's go back to this race. Yes, there's a few of them lining up at Addington on Friday night. But the winner of this, Michael, Pin Seeker, 28 second first quarter of the last mile when it and Triple G had a bit of a battle in front. Trained by Johnny Cox, he's very smart, this guy. Comes to Addington Raceway for the first time and does this to a, an excellent field. In behind Dalton Shard, Dashing Major, uh, Double Time, all of the Dunn horses there. They all go to the Cheviot Cup on uh, Sunday along with Mawanga, Franco Indy, he's a sport. It'll be a cracking contest. Yeah, they're great races, those country cup type races, even though it's not actually in the country. Um, just on Pinseeker, he's an embarrassing confession for you, Greg. I'd never heard of it about two months ago. And my brother, Grum, who doesn't actually ever bit much on harness racing, likes grass track harness racing. And he t- texted my brother at Barry and I and said, you better watch out for this Pinseeker, it's quite good. So I spent about 10 minutes looking for it in the galloping fields because he doesn't bit on harness. <laughs> and, and I then found it in the harness fields because he loves grass track harness. I think it was a Cromwell. And it just there. smashed them. And I thought, wow, mm. you found one there. And it's been really good since. So, yes, um, I'm not taking any credit for being a pin seeker fan. I was, uh, I was alerted to it by the youngest of the 11 Guerin siblings. Well, I tell you what, he's found one because it, uh, it's pretty smart. And it just proved that on uh, Saturday. Uh, our competition. Well, James Beattie, as we know, is making his way to the race by Grins. But, Michael, your top five New Zealand-trained overseas performers of the last, what, 40 or 50 years, what did you in come a, up with? In our lifetimes, Gregory. So yes, our we'll lifetimes, make, Michael. We'll make that okay. 50. <laughs> Let's make that you, official. will show you the greys. <laughs> mm-hmm. A bit late now. Um, okay, so here, here was my top five, and there's reasons around it. So it's only based on Australia. On Overseas performances. New Zealand performances are irrelevant. Okay, Young Quinn. Young Quinn won the US Pacing Championship, uh, won a couple of really serious races in the US when campaigned uh, there by Charlie Hunter. So I checked with Charlie. He did train him for most of those races. So yes, he needed to be trained there. Uh, He also won a Miracle Mile. Mile. Yes, from the outside draw. So Mm. won a Miracle Mile. Lyle Creek, we all know. That that just writes itself. Prior to Petit, was a great, great horse in Australia. Great horse. And she also qualified for the Elite Lop final, which is incredibly difficult to do. Um, her dam, Petita Vander, was also a very good horse, but prior to Petite's body of work overseas was better than her dam. Lazarus, obviously, when trained by New Zealanders, won everything that mattered more or less. Won a Victoria Cup, the Hunter Cup, and into Dominion. Um, won a derby in Australia, won a Chariots of Fire. Now, here's a horse a lot of people wouldn't have put on this list. But there's a reason he's on. Holmes DG, we're only basing this on Australian performances, and there's only one point of basing it, that's on wins, because defeats don't matter. He actually got beaten quite a few times in Australia, Holmes DG. But he won two derbies in Australia, which is pretty good. The hard things to win, and beat good horses winning them. So he's won their best three-year-old races. He then won their best four-year-old race. He won the Chariots of Fire. That's their best four-year-old race. He won one of their best, the comparable Miracle Mile, but he won two of them. Won two Miracle Miles. And he won a Victoria Cup. So Holmes DG's won the best three-year-old race in Australia, a derby, he won two of them. He won the Chariots of Fire, their best four-year-old race. He won two Miracle Miles, which is as good as their best race. And he won a Victoria Cup. Now, Choken also won two Miracle Miles on a Victoria Cup, but he didn't win those derbies or chariots of fires. So he was a better horse than Holmes DG, but we're talking 
overseas performances. And don't worry, there's plenty of other great ones. Undercover Lover did a good job, and other horses have gone to North America for a little bit. Not many were trained over there by Kiwis. And a lot of good horses like El Sue did amazing things in Australia. But when you go back over the last 50 years, it's hard to find a horse who won more races that matter in Australia, Greg, that matter. Derbies, Chariots of Fire, and Miracle Miles and Victoria Cups matters. He is, out of all that list, the race which is the sexiest and the most fun, and we should show most weeks on the show because it's so much fun. Here's the 1997 Inter-Dominion final. You're looking at the horse down the outside. I know it's not very clear. doesn't matter. It's still pretty darn impressive. Greg, that's as good a trotting performance as I've seen in this part of the world. Coming off 40 metres, beating an all-star field. The horses who ran second, third and fourth there are all stars. Not good horses, stars. That was a remarkable, remarkable win. She's on the list. She was a far better horse overseas than she was in New Zealand. And Greg, I put a lot of thought into that. Some people wouldn't like Holmes DG being in there. But when you categorise what he did in Australia, compared with other horses in the last 50 years, I couldn't think of one who had won more races that are important. Yep, and beat Wagon Apollo Pride of Petit, as you mentioned, uh, and also Night Pistol and Night Hold Pistol, of My Heart. Hold of My Heart. Hold of My Heart was fourth. Just, <clears throat> we're just a wonderful field of All horses. Right. Here's um, my five, Michael. Um, yours. Lyle Creek, for obvious reasons, we talked about that. I went with Courage Under Fire because I don't believe any horse will win six derbies, and I know two of them were here, but. What he did in Australia as a three-year-old was nothing short of staggering. Lazarus, I'll get to again in a moment because that's the video I want to show you. His win in the WA Inter Dominion was beyond belief. We've just watched Pride of Petit. You mentioned Undercover Lover. Uh, she won 21 races. Uh, she won a Victoria Oaks. She finished second in a Queensland Oaks and third in an Australian Derby behind Taylor made Lombo, who I've often been told is the absolute best, and she won 300, a best mare, or filly of all time, uh, and she won 300,000 uh, when trained uh, here by Graham Pearson uh, in America. She won three races over there. So I was happy to put her in. Yes, you can make a case for young Quinn. I love what you've said about Holmes DG. Uh, it was just fun going through uh, these. Here's the race that I wanted to show you, Lazarus this day, Michael, was beyond belief. That's him getting past Tiger Tara. Chicago Bull couldn't catch him. He sat parked around Gloucester Park, and you see what it meant to Mark Purden there. That was unreal from him, like most of his career. It's a funny thing, because the Lazarus and Le Leap to Fame keep coming up in the same conversation, because they're very similar horses. Not blessed with great gate speed and had to sit parked. And a lot of people have said to me over the last year, because I'm such a hard marker on horses, oh, you don't think Larry's a champion? And I think he's getting there, and I think he's close enough to it now. But Leap to Fame sat parked to win a Miracle Mile, which was very, very cool and was great. But he still beat sooner the better, sitting parked, and he only sat parked to, one, to win one really major race. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened with Lazarus. He just sat parked to win whatever he wanted. He would just sit parked in a Hunter Cup, but he wouldn't sit parked there. Two weeks later, he went out and sat three wide for an entire race around second. Like, it's so hard in modern harness racing to sit parked. And I'm not talking sitting parked for the last lap, Greg, yep. and just winning. To sit parked again and again and again and win these races is just amazing. Mm, yeah, and unreal. when he didn't sit parked, he won a New Zealand Cup by 10 lengths and a New Zealand Cup by 5 lengths. Mm. I know there's a lot of goats. People like to mention goat because they don't have enough imagination to come up with something better. But he's a if, there, if, there's been a better, <laughs> he's a if there's been a better horse in the last 25 years, New Zealand trained horse, yep. than Lazarus, then I haven't been paying attention. And I loved El Sue. I loved some of the other horses. And on the Australian front, of course there's been some. Blacks of Fake is better performed overall than Lazarus. But when the goat starts to get banded round, you think about what that horse did on both sides of the Tasman and then beat the Americans at their own stuff going 146 and change. Yeah. He's a, hell, he's a hell of a horse and he'll be a hell of a horse in 100 years time. Yep, absolutely he will be. We had a competition. Here's our lucky winner. She only spends a couple of uh, months of the year in New Zealand, but that doesn't matter. She came up with Petita Vander. This was the first one that came in too, Michael. Very impressive. Young Quinn, Lyle Creek. 
Pride of Petite and Choken, who of course won a New Zealand Cup, a couple of Auckland Cups and a couple of Miracle Miles. So good on you, uh, Andrea. We will be in contact and you get your $100 to have a play with. Uh, we'll put that into your phone account and wish you all the very best with that. Nice competition. Well, Michael, It's, it's a liked great, it. great, great list. Um, yeah. I think we'll do with the new season. I think the box is coming back in the new season, by the way. It's going to be slightly different. We're going to have more entame oomph and give us some resource, which will be really fun. Because yeah, it'd be great. Greg's had to put this together by himself for the last four years. <laughs> yeah, look at me. Look at me. Don't I look tired? <laughs> he's, he has made him grey. Uh, i tell you what I want to do next year, because I've been thinking about this also for some other shows we've got next season coming up. This will be a real fun one. The five drivers, New Zealand drivers of all time, you would have driving for your life. Or if you had a million on, if you had to have your whole shooting box on one, who would the five New Zealand drivers be? Like it. And then you start going, Hurley, Morris Holmes, Peter Wolfenden, Dexter Dunn, Blair Orange, Anthony Butt, Ricky May, yeah. Morris Goes McKendry, on and David on and Butcher. On. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. back to people you can't even remember from mm. so long ago. So that's going to be a fun old conversation yep. to get involved in. Look forward to doing uh, that, Michael. Where can you go harness racing around New Zealand uh, this week? Here's our map. If you get this early enough to Meru, I think there's seven races there. They do kick off at uh, 1.15. Invercargill race on Thursday, 12.57 the start time there. They've got a couple of decent races there, including a Southland Oaks heat. Cambridge, the two flying miles, paces and trotters. Uh, Ten race program there, 5.42. And those in the sweepstake will get drawn out that night as well. Group 2 Coca-Cola Superstars Championship. Could be 11 races there, so might be a slightly earlier start. 60,000 you're playing for there. Uh, the Copity Equine Farm Leonard Memorial, $40,000 at Group 3 level, and that Cheviot Businesses Cheviot Cup. It's going to be a ripper at Addington on Sunday. Michael, it feels like the week before Christmas for many people because next week we get a chance, live Wednesday evening, 7.30, preview Race by Grins, the new tab trot and all of the undercard races it's going to be superb at Cambridge and looking forward to sitting down and going through those with you and the big fish will be part of our crew too just just on that so for people watching this Thursday night make sure you're watching Craig will be on track at Cambridge it's really serious stuff so what else do people have to watch 7 30 Monday 7 30 Monday is a barrier, barrier draw, draw reveal. reveal yep that's live 7 30 Wednesday box seat special in conjunction with the TAB and Entain, and then obviously uh, the big night on uh, Friday night as cool. well. So a lot of information to come through, uh, but make sure you're tuned to Trackside 1, and uh, you can do that now on Freeview if uh, if you didn't uh, didn't have Sky and you, you weren't able to before, which I think is a great thing. Well, also you can watch it online too. If yep. Some people like to watch things at their own time, Greg. Yep. And the other thing too is um, HRNZ will get right behind this. They'll have a big lift out next week and they'll keep you up to date with all the information, which will be really cool. So look, I'm looking forward. It's going to be a hell of a time. I think in many ways, Larry not coming has actually embellished the race. It because I think he'd just win it because he'd be too good for these horses. Um, we've got a really interesting time ahead. So analysis is going to be important. So is information. Um, track side between all of us. I'm going to try and keep you up to date with that over the next 10 days. Yep, all right. Both Michael and I will catch you 7.30 for the preview of the Race by Grins and Tab Trot. Uh, we'll see you then on Wednesday night. The Box Seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Harness Link, for all your worldwide harness racing coverage. Brecon Farms. New Zealand Bloodstock Standard Bread, IRT, it's your horse and our passion, Garrard's Horse and Hound, Lincoln Farms, Renwick Farms, Harness Racing New Zealand, the clubs, Auckland, Cambridge, Addington and Ashburton, and the TAB.